Hi everyone, my name is Mark and I am a commercial and wedding photographer based in New England and today I'm going to be sharing five of the most important things that photographers and their clients should be looking for in wedding photography contracts. Let's hit it. want to look their best. Now, in some ways I feel like I'm jumping out of the YouTube gate with a topic that could be really boring for some people, but I really do believe that understanding contracts is a first and important step to running a successful photography business, and it's a subject that I'm still learning about even 10 years into this business. I also feel like especially coming out of a year like 2020 where contracts and their clauses were so top of mind for so many photographers and their clients, that makes now as good a time as any to share what I've learned about this subject and hopefully help some of you along the way. I've really appreciated the way that industry peers have come together this year to share information on this topic, especially because it's one that can often feel so personal. I promise to keep this video as entertaining as possible. It's gonna be a lot of information, so stick with me. Now, of course, I will start off by saying that I am not a lawyer and this is not legal advice. Be careful, I jump, I jump, I jump, I jump, I jump. But I hope it's a helpful piece of information as you take your own journey to getting legally sound. I don't know. But now that we've gotten that out of the way, here are my top five things that wedding photographers and their clients should be looking for in wedding photography contracts. Tip number one, make sure you separate yourself from your business. Now this first tip really relates more to the structure of your business, whether you have a DBA or an LLC or maybe even an S Corp. And I feel like I could end up doing a video on all of those subjects separately. So if that's something that interests you, please let me know down in the comments below. YouTube, see what I did there? Comment below, engagement, algorithm. Taken off. But in any case, it's very important that any contract you write is established between your clients and your business, not yourself as an individual. This can be a very easy to overlook step because so many photographers have businesses that are just first name, last name, photography, myself included. But it's a very important first step to get in front of any potential litigation that could ever come down the road. Ultimately, what this means is that if anything goes wrong, it's your business and its assets that carry the liability rather than you as an individual. Number two. Define what it costs to reserve your time. Now this has been an especially hot topic in 2020 and 2021 with so many clients canceling or postponing their wedding plans, but it's really important that you communicate early and effectively with your clients about your booking process and your payment schedules. Remember that contracts are ultimately in place to protect the business and the client. So use this clause as an opportunity to build trust between you and your clients. Let me try to explain what I mean by that. First, let me explain why I choose to use the term reservation fee when talking about the money that clients put down to officially book my services. Now you might have heard this term referred to as a deposit or retainer, and while familiar, I have been advised that that terminology can cause issues down the line. So let me explain why I use the phrase reservation fee. When I book a client, they are confirming that they want to work with me, and I am promising to be available to work with them. This commitment has a value that goes in both directions. My clients can rest easy knowing that I'm committed to their date whether or not a sweeter deal comes through my inbox, and the payments that they submit up front helps to cover the expenses of my business through the months or even years leading up to their event date. Understanding the potential value of any given calendar date is a critical first step in understanding the importance of reservation fees. In 2021, my average wedding photography client pays $6,500 for my services. That means that each date of availability I have has a potential value of $6,500 to my business. Counting the number of events that I turn down because somebody else has already paid to reserve my time is a really tangible reminder of how important these fees are even before I'm there to photograph the event. If that client chooses to cancel or even postpone their wedding, I'm not only losing out on their remaining balance, but it's also possible that I may have turned down multiple other inquiries, sometimes even higher paying inquiries on the same date. I know this is dense, stay with me. So by framing these payments as reservation fees, it helps to clarify that this is a service that we actually render at signing, 
the act of reserving the date, and it doesn't technically matter whether the event actually happens or not. We've still held that date, we've still said no to other work, and that work has already been completed on behalf of the client. This was obviously massively important in a year like 2020 with so many postponements and cancellations, but it's really important for any events contract under any circumstance. Now in saying this, I don't mean to suggest that photographers and event workers shouldn't lead with compassion. I've often said that wedding creatives work at the intersection of art and service. And in a season like the one that we're facing right now, we need to make sure that we are still motivated by the human connection and empathy that should be motivating what we do in the first place, even as we need to stick to our contracts to preserve the longevity of our businesses. I've personally been so encouraged by the many ways that I've been able to collaborate with clients to re-envision and reimagine many safe ways to celebrate despite the challenges that we've been facing. In fact, I think that leading with transparency and having some really clear language developed in my contract really helped mitigate some of the issues that I would have otherwise been facing if I hadn't dedicated as much time to this specific clause. Tip number three, let's clarify force majeure. If you're anything like me, force majeure is not only a difficult phrase to know how to pronounce. For, force majeure, 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 majeure. Simply put, force majeure refers to incidents or circumstances that make it impossible for either party to fulfill their side of a contract. Pre-COVID, all of us probably parked the act of God clauses squarely in the part of our brain that says we probably won't have to deal with that. Now there is a lot of debate out there about what actually constitutes as a force majeure event, but the two main points that I want to get across today are that A, you should have a clause to address this subject, and that B, that clause should outline and detail your response if this clause is triggered. For me, this is where my emergency rescheduling process is detailed. In typical circumstances, the reservation fees that clients submit to me are both non-refundable and non-transferable, but this process changes a bit if the rescheduling is due to a force majeure event. For event workers in 2021, two very important words to circle around in force majeure clauses are both impossibility and unforeseeable. We know now that event guest restrictions and safety measures are no longer unforeseeable, because we've seen them. And while we know that they're different to be sure, wedding celebrations of some kind are still very possible and to be honest, they're pretty special. Now again, this doesn't mean that we don't have to lead with empathy when having these hard conversations with our clients, just like we would want them to be empathetic to our own circumstances. Stick to your contract, but be nice about it. Tip number four. It might sound simple, but one of the most important ways that you can build and maintain trust with your clients is to clarify early on what services you will and won't be providing as part of your agreement. This should all somehow be framed under either the scope of work clause or the line items in your associated invoice. Questions like, how many hours will you be there to photograph the event? Can the client edit your photos after receiving them? How will you be delivering the photographs? Whose responsibility is it to back up the photographs once they've been delivered? Is there a cost to print or download the photos? What happens if there's terrible weather? Do you provide the raw photos? Will you be the only photographer at the event? There's ultimately no right answer for any of these questions, but they really help to provide clarity for your working relationship and help to clear up any potential questions coming down the line. This is an opportunity to present yourself as a seasoned pro by thinking ahead, which will ultimately lead to more trust between you and your clients. Finally, one clause that's especially critical for any event worker who works primarily alone, you need a transfer of services clause. However unlikely, there's always the possibility that something would happen to you personally that will make you unable to attend the event. Maybe you become seriously ill or break your leg a week before the event. What happens then? Today I got up, I stepped onto the grill and I clamped down on my foot. That's it. I don't see what's so hard to believe about that. Boom. Answer. Transfer of services. I'm grateful that in all my years photographing weddings, I haven't yet had to trigger this clause, but it does help me rest easy knowing that I have it in place just in case. It's so important to develop and maintain good relationships with local photographers to help cover for you should there be some sort of emergency outside of your control that makes you not able to photograph the event. And it's very important that your clients have a good understanding of how a transfer like this would work under the terms of your agreement. All of this goes back to the same idea of establishing and maintaining clarity and trust with your clients. Bonus tip. 
I highly recommend using a CRM to manage all of your communications and contracts with your clients. CRM just stands for Customer Relationship Management Software. I've used an incredible program called Dubsado for the past several years of my business and it has been a game changer in helping me stay organized and on top of all of my client communications. In my experience, people tend to avoid investing in these programs until they're already experiencing issues on the admin front. So if you can swing the investment early on, it certainly will help as your business continues to grow. It's always way better to have good systems in place early than it is to try and fix problems once they've started. If you want, you can learn more about Dubsado and save 20% on your own subscription using code SPOONER20 at checkout. And you can learn more through the link below. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope this video was helpful to you, whether you're just starting out in photography or whether you're already a seasoned pro. I know for me personally, I'm constantly still revisiting my contract to make sure that it always remains up to date with lessons that I've learned on the job. If you did find this helpful and would be interested in purchasing my entire wedding photography contract, I've made that template available for purchase in the link below. Remember that there's no substitute for having your contracts reviewed by a professional attorney, but I have found that it's really helpful to have a robust template built out to save money on revisions and amendments. Plus, this contract has seen a lot of lawyer time in the past couple years, so it's pretty snug. Please consider liking, subscribing, and even sharing this video with someone who you think might find it helpful. I am in the very early stages of growing this channel, but I do want it to be a place where I can offer resources like this for people who need it. Remember, at the end of the day, contracts are simply a way to serve your clients well. The best contracts are ones that never have to be referred back to because the clients loved working with you so much and they love their photos. Human connection motivates the core of what we do as wedding photographers, and you should never forget that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, also, life update. So do you remember that time when I made a YouTube channel and then never really made any follow-up videos? It's because we got a dog and our life has been crazy, but we love her. Say hi to Murphy. Like and subscribe. Oh, she's peeing, she's peeing. Just... I know, but they don't know that. Okay.